do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. I wanted to do a very quick video tutorial today for the PS2 and we're going to showcase OPL 1.0.0. Okay, so this just came out earlier this month, earlier in the year 2021. It's been in the making for a very long time and now here it is. This is awesome. So if you go to the video description, I have a link. You can read more about it at psx-place.com. Go through the change log, the notes, known issues, release downloads, credits, and thanks. So what's most important for now is you, there's a forum, there's a readme file, but if you want to download the program and the source, you can go to the GitHub, scroll down, you can read all this good information here, but you can go down and go ahead and download 7z If you wish, you can download the variants. I haven't tried this out yet, but I did download this, the 100. So it's a 7-zip file. I have it on my desktop, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and extract to his own folder. And then I have a USB plugged in on my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click the .elf file, say copy, and then I'm gonna go to my USB here, and then go ahead and right click and paste it into root. It doesn't really matter where you paste it, but I'm pasting the root. And then from there, I'm just gonna go ahead, eject my USB, and then I will plug that into my PS2, right? So once I'm on my PS2, I use free make boot, and then I have you launch elf, so that's my method. Your method might be a little bit different. You might have a uh, fun tuna, you might have four tuna project, maybe you're, maybe you're using free DVD boot, maybe you're using a mod chip with a boot disk, or a fat PS2 with free HD boot. Bottom line is you got a lot of different ways to do the next the next step, which is basically how are you going to load into you launch elf, right? So I'm using free McBoot as my particular example today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead, go over to my capture card and show you the process of um, running OPL 1.0.0. If you are familiar with OPL in the past, it won't look drastically different, but there are a little bit of changes that I noticed. So we'll talk about that. So let's go ahead and jump into the next portion of this video tutorial. Let's do this. All right, so here's the main menu of my free McBoot, so let's do this. So what we're gonna do is I wanna show you how to use the free McBoot configurator if you're interested. I already have a shortcut to LPL 1.0, but let me show you how I made my own shortcut basically in a nutshell. So you go into free McBoot configurator and then go to configure OSD sys options. Scroll over all to the right. I made a new entry called OPL 1.0. I made a path, uh, map to any MC is what I like to do and then go to return, go to return, and then go ahead and save it to your memory card, which is what I do, or you can save it to your mass drive or your hard drive zero, whatever your method is, right? But I like to save it to my memory card. Once the PS2 has reboot, it's gonna load from the configuration file, and that's how it knows what shortcuts to display on the main screen of Freemic Boot. So let me show you how to use ulaunch elf to copy OPL 1.0.0 to your memory card if that's something that you want to do. So I'm gonna to go to my mass drive basically, and on my mass drive, I have the elf file on the root. So I'm just gonna go down to the elf file, and then what you do is you press R1, it will bring up a menu and go ahead and copy, and then just basically navigate to your memory card. My memory card is MC0, go to the boot folder, R1, and paste. I already have the elf file there, but I'm just gonna overwrite it for purposes of this tutorial. And then afterwards, I'm gonna run the elf file and show you what it looks like. If you're a user of OPL in the past, OPL 1.0.0 does not look drastically different, um, which is probably a good thing. So here's what it looks like. Um, I have some example USB games here. Um, I do want to note that this particular theme doesn't have wallpaper art in the background. So not sure if that's um, just the way that the program's designed or that's just how this program with this particular theme, but at least the box art works fine with OPL Manager uh, version 21.7 is what I use here. Okay, so on the bottom, you got different tabs. Um, if I go through settings, this is my setup here. So hard drive, Ethernet applications, those are set to manual. So that's why you, you see those tabs on the bottom there. So games I've tested on USB. If I had games on SMB, they'll show here. Same thing with internal hard drive. If I'm a user that uses apps, but I, um, I can load apps from here, but I don't. So that's what that particular uh, tab there is for. I do want to say that this particular branch of OPL 1.0.0 does not allow you to play PS1 games or Popstarter games. 
So there are other versions of OPL online that has that ability. But this particular branch, these group of developers did not want to do that because of uh, copyrighted code, possibly, or whatever. And they don't want to get in trouble from Sony. So that's why this particular OPL version does not allow you to play um, Pop Starter PS1 games. So if that's important for you, look up my other Pop Starter tut tutorials in the past, and you'll get an idea of how to do that, basically. Okay, so let's go back to USB. I'm just going to load an example game here. If you already know how to use USB games already in the past, then um, nothing changes, right? So I'm sure there's some improvements with OPL 1.0.0. Like I said, go to the psx-place.com to learn more. Go to the GitHub. I'm sure this won't be the final release. I'm sure there's things in store for the future. So it's very exciting times indeed. So if you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.